All right, well, church family, we're back with you uh, for another midweek Bible teaching. This time it's over Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're just continuing on through the book of Romans uh, here probably through the summer. Um, and so actually we're looking forward to maybe someday again uh, having a Wednesday or Thursday night uh, in our churches. Uh, but until then, we just want to continue being able to teach the Word of God, talk about the Word of God um, with each other. And, and we pray again that that as you're watching, you can leave comments uh, in our Facebook post or on the YouTube page um, and just let us know, you know what you're thinking about these passages. Uh, we're going to have a kind of a closing thought tonight on, on things that we want you to think about and be in prayer about as you're facing the challenges you know, of our world today. Um, and so we'd love to hear your answer to that question, uh, maybe not right away, but as you process it over the next few days as you watch this. Uh, just, just let us know that, that you're working on these things. Uh, that God's still working on you because we we need to be continue to be the church and be the church with each other and for each other, um, even in this time. So uh, we are going to spend a little bit of time in prayer tonight. Um, and so, you know, it, this is a public forum, so we don't want to give out a whole lot of details. Um, we we're, But we will pray by name for people and, and give uh, little bits and pieces just because we know that, that God already knows everything. So we're not worried about him needing our, our prayers the words of our prayers so much, but uh, we do want you to be informed as well as possible of, of what's going on in people's lives, and so um, we'll pray for that. Marcy will pray for the for the people of Sheraton, and I'll pray for the people in Bloomfield, and uh, we would just encourage you to join us in those prayers. Write these down. Uh, continue to pray for people throughout the week, um, and let's just have a great uh, a great midweek service time, and uh, we'll just we'll we'll get through what we can get through, and and have a good time doing it. And we want to thank you for watching with us um, and just joining with us. As we go through Romans chapter 5, at least the first half of it tonight, I think we'll get through. And, and Marcy's going to do a great job teaching us. So I'll turn it over to Marcy for, for prayer, and then I'll, I'll close us out, and then we'll, we'll get started. Sounds good. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. And we just thank you for this time that we get to come together and to learn more about your word. And Lord, I just pray that you open up our hearts and our minds to what it is that you want us to learn out of the lesson tonight. And Lord, I pray for these requests that we have in Sheraton. I pray for Bev Christensen. I pray for uh, Bill Norris. I pray for Dan Millage, uh, the health concerns there. I pray for Roy Johnson and the health concerns there. And David Kent and Terry Thompson with the health concerns. And Myrna Dyer. And Linda Litweiler, who wants prayer for her family members, and Bob and Shirley, and the situations that's their the decisions and that are they're facing there. And Lord, I pray for this baby Miles who has these tumors, uh, that you'll work with the doctors and all these situations, and continue to work with the doctors and show them what it is that they need to do. And and Lord, we pray for Bob Worthman, and we pray for Nathan Peterson who aren't able to have these visitors now um, and we just pray that you continue to show them that you're right there with them through all of this and we pray for Teresa Cobb and the situations that's going on there and we pray for Charlotte Barnes as she's recovering from the surgery that she had Lord, we just pray that you continue to be with everyone on this list and continue to show yourself to them and how much you love them. Continue to be with the doctors that are making decisions in any of these health problems. Lord, I just pray that you just, just continue to show them how much you love them. Heavenly Father, as we uh, continue to come to you here for, um, for guidance, for, um, for help, uh, in these times, God, I pray that you would just um, let your hand be felt, your your presence be felt in each of our our households, Father God. Um, that w as we cannot gather uh, together, that your your presence would would be the thing that binds us together through this time, Father. And so, as we lift up these requests um, for our Bloomfield family, I pray that you would uh, be with uh, with each family with their their health, their their concerns, their parents uh, or of kids that are having to go to work still. Um, that, that you would just have um, a, a safety net around these families, Father God, that they would just they they would be able to, to 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 just be together and not be scared, Father God. I do pray that you'd be with the Davidson family, uh, with um, Jennifer being out of town, um, and so Eric being at home with 
with his daughter's granddaughter, Father God, as they um, as they get through this time of, of mom being being out of town and, and waiting for her to come back, just continue to, to be with them and bless their family, Father God. I pray that you'd be with those that are facing financial um, hardships because of uh, this virus that's going around and the effects of, of this, uh, you know, some of these lockdowns or these times where we, we can't gather. And so that's affected the jobs of several people in our church. And I, I pray, Father, that you would just um, find, find a way to help them in those needs. If there's a way as a church family that we can help, would you show us those ways? Father God, I pray that you'd be with uh, Dorothy and Kevin Day, uh, Kevin's mom, is in the hospital, and, and, and there's a lot of different health concerns going on there. Um, but would you just would you just place your hand on that family, Father? Uh, be with Kevin's dad as he uh, is 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 has restrictions on when he can visit and all these kinds of things, and and other family members that aren't able to visit because of of this uh, scare that we're going through. Father, just continue to have your hand on these people that need to see your your work. Uh, present in their lives father god they just they need to know that you you love them and care for them and are willing to be with them father god would you bless this time together tonight our discussion and each 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 person that watches let them be blessed and moved by the holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen all right so uh before you start let me ask you how, how are you doing with all this coronavirus stuff how am I doing? Yeah, you and your family, how are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing all right. I mean, we <laughs> we kind of had a socially distanced life <laughs> being homeschoolers. So um, we have missed, you know, the Wednesday nights getting together and mm -hmm. the Thursday nights and obviously Sunday. So um, there has been that. But we've kind of just been going along about our business of yeah. school still. So Good. Yeah. Well, we're, you know, our family, we, uh, some crazy reason, I thought it'd be a good idea for us to get a dog. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, I, I've, I've wanted a dog. We've had dogs before, and then, you know, they got older and had to be, had to be you know, put down, and, and then we went without for a little while, and, and now Jacob's to an age where it's going to be fun, right? It is fun, but we got a puppy, and, and it's a big puppy. He's going to be a big dog, which I don't do little dogs, so I'm happy about that. I'm excited, but man, is it nuts. And I, I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea. Rachel actually went back to work uh, on Monday of this week. And so that leaves me with a four-year-old who can't go to school, an infant, and a puppy. So, you know, I don't know how I'm doing, but uh, we're making <laughs> it through. And so this is my reprieve for the, for the week. I get to come and spend time with an adult. So I thank you for that. And uh, we'll have a good Bible discussion. But uh, you know, I think families, as much as we can, need to band together. So mm -hmm. I'm praying for your family, praying for all of your families out there, and, and ask that you just continue to pray for us. So, yeah. all right, now I'll let you get going. I just thought it'd be good okay. to give an update. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, well, and Adam's still been working, so he's kind of, you know, going back and forth. You make him, so you make him quarantine himself <laughs> before he can come inside no, the house? No, no, but we do yeah. spray him down with Lysol, you, you know. <laughs> I like it. Well, that sh you should probably continue that practice. <laughs> Even after, Even after all this is over, yeah. Yeah, yeah. oh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, and the first, the, we're going to go through um, the first part of Romans uh, chapter 5. Yes, um, good And stuff. so I want us to read through um, verses 1 through 11. RJ, would you be willing yeah. to read that? Romans chapter 5, mm -hmm. uh, verses 1 through 11, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, 
How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Whew. That's a good, good 11 verses there. That is. I mean, especially, I feel, through this season in our lives right now. Um, and one thing I kind of wanted to point out at the very beginning of this study is, you know, Paul, Paul says, therefore, since we have been justified through ta- faith, we have peace with God through our, our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace. Paul says we a lot because this this whole thing is must be experienced in community. Um, and I know right now, you know, <laughs> we are trying to do community via a, a, a camera right. um, and a Bible study online. But it very much is, you know, Paul was very, he used we, not just since I have been justified through faith. It's we. It's right. very much a community thing. Yep. Um, well, that's good. You know, even so when Paul was writing this, you know, they, they didn't have they, they gathered together, but not like we gather like once once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Um, and it's great. And I love it. Wouldn't want it any other way. But back then they did. They did home church. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they gather uh, and see the priest when they could. There's specific times when they had to. Um, but they weren't gathering together like we even are able to gather together today. And so the idea that um, they did, you know, they didn't even have technology back then. Mm-hmm. So they had to be really intentional about how they did community kind of stuff and to, to realize they needed to take care of their neighbor. They needed to be um, looking out for accountability-wise for their neighbor and those kinds of things. So I think it's a really good distinction to make that even though they, they, they are probably in a similar situation to what we are now, not able to get together all the time mm-hmm. and yet being intentional about how they can be a community. Right, right, right. So in this first section there, we kind of have this, um, this peace, grace, and hope is kind of the, the theme of this section here, um, this first section. And so that peace I have written like is, is kind of out of the root word where shalom would be come from. And it'd be now translated into l- hello, but it's more of a prayer, like a may you be well. Right. Um, So it says that peace was not just the absence of conflict, but a notion of wholeness, health and well-being, and a completeness in heart. And so I was thinking back through, you know, as we, you know, we both went through systematic theology, Mm -hmm. and I'm uh, one, and I'm in it for two now, but I thought of this quote from Dunning, Uh, H. Ray Dunning, on his book, Grace, Faith, and Holiness, which is one of the textbooks, and it says um, that this peace involves the harmony of an individual with himself, Hmm. with nature, with the world of people, and clearly with God. Hmm. So this peace is the harmony of ourselves, with nature, with the world of people, and with God. So peace was more than just this absence of conflict, but a harmony to it, sure. a wholeness. Yeah, and I think that when you when you miss one of those four uh, elements, so like if you're not at peace with God, like you and your relationship with God, if something's off there, you and your relationship with people, something's off there, or you and your relationship with nature, something's off there, and just that's the, that's it's not like, ooh, trees and, and mountains, that's just, that's the world that we live in, right? Mm-hmm. All the, there's something wrong there, or if there's something wrong with the way that you relate to yourself. So God, others, nature, yourself. If there's something that's off, the other three will become off w- mm-hmm. uh, as well if it's not already. And so that's where, you know, that, that idea of peace has to encompass all four of those. I think that's, a, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so to have peace with God is to have peace with all yes. of four of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so... Um, I have written here that God's dying love makes it possible for humans truly to love one another with that agape kind of love that we've talked about. I know I've talked about it here in Sheraton, and we've talked about it in Broomfield on our Wednesday nights, too. Just that that agape love for each other. And um, 
And then I want to discuss just a little bit that that peace with God that we have that Dunning talks about in his quote, this peace with God. Um, And it said that we're no longer his enemies, but his friends. Being reconciled to our creator, we have no reason to fear death. We can approach God with confidence. That's, I mean, that's timely for what we're dealing with now. Um, uh, you know, Christians, we're, we're, we're being faced with this, this thing that's going on. And, 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 and I preached a bit a little bit on Sunday, but, you know, about fear. But this fear of death, it's pretty, pretty grand. You know, it's, a, it's a big fear. Um, and then we have this, this other thing that goes on. And, and Christians, you know, we, we, we don't do well at talking about this, but we really have made this idea of money and wealth into this, this really pretty big thing in our lives, especially here in America. And so we have this fear of losing wealth or being, and, and you could say, I don't have any money, uh, but you, you, in America, just being born in America, you're secure, right? Like we, we are pretty secure, even the, the lowest income brackets, those kinds of, we've got security um, here in America. So we fear losing that security and we fear death. And so being a follower of Christ, being a, 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 a part of the family of God, that fear should go away, right? And not just some magical, you know, snap of the finger where it just, it's gone, like, ooh, I prayed a prayer and now it's gone. It's No, once you get into an actual relationship with you and God and that piece of that, that wholeness of all four elements of that is actually working, and that's not a snap of the finger thing, that's a, that's a process, that's a growing in knowledge of the Word of God, growing in that relationship, growing in, in experiencing His grace and forgiveness for your sins. So as you grow into that, that wholeness and that peace comes in, and then we find ourselves in a place of lacking fear. We don't, we're not afraid, right? And, that's not, and, and, and there's no timetable for that, but it's, that's the goal. That's what we're getting. Like, I don't want to be afraid of death, right? right? And so mm-hmm. I think that's really good to have peace with God should mean no fear of death, no fear of, of losing your wealth or your stability. Or your, it's just not because we, we're good. Mm-hmm. We're good all around. We're good. And so that's, I think yeah. it's really cool. We have, that, we have that peace with everything, that yeah. wholeness there. Yeah. And so um, Paul kind of goes through and he said, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And so we're going to talk kind of about grace next. But something that I thought was good to point out was that gained access by faith into this grace. So gained access. So not through our own strength or our works, like Paul had been talking about through several chapters in this, not by our own strength or by works, but through Christ, he says, um, there, you know, into this grace in which we stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. So through our Lord Jesus Christ is there. So, but through Christ. So um, I also, I found this, this great uh, quote from William Greathouse in the, the commentary that I've been reading. It says, true uh, god loves us and true god loves us enough to accept us just as we are sin and all but he loves us too much to leave us as we are wallowing in and enslaved to our sin Mm -hmm. grace sets us free to enjoy a new quality of life that's i mean that's 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 it right there and this you know we can see we can kind of get into these weird theological discussions with between denominations and, and all this kind of stuff. I think everyone believes this, like following after Jesus Christ. Uh, I had a great, I, I had a discussion with a, a Baptist pastor a couple weeks ago, and he absolutely believes, you know, that, that we should, if we are truly following after Jesus Christ, we have a relationship with God where Jesus is our Lord and Savior, our lives will be different. Right. So 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 even if you if you believe you can lose your salvation or you believe that you can walk away from it or you can't walk away from it, no matter what you believe in that sense, it's so secondary to the fact that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, your life will show it. Right. Your life will prove it out. The fruit, as we talked about last week, the fruit will show what the what's the where the roots are at. If there's roots, good roots that produce good fruit 
that will show forth in your life if you are living after that grace of God. Living in that, that grace of God has just changed your life. And it will. It has to. Like, if it doesn't, it's God's not all powerful. And we know that He is. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah. And so um, I wanted to kind of talk about grace just a little bit. And it said in that commentary that God, it was the God given ability to be and do what we could never be or do on our own. Right, right. Um, and then also to kind of follow that up, another one of these, I tried to stay away from some of these quotes, but they were yeah. just too good. <laughs> another great house quote is living in grace does not release us from obedience. It empowers us for obedience. I so, so let me ask you a question, put you on, on the spot here. Uh, what? So what would you say to someone who's, who does struggle with, you know, whether it's committing the same sin over and over again, but they're, they're, man, they, they're showing up to church, they're, they're, they're crying at the altar every week, they're, they're crying themselves to sleep because there's some sin that they're stuck in their life, and it doesn't seem like grace is really making a difference in their lives. Um, I think the reality from that for us is true. I think this is so true. Living in grace does not release us from obedience. It empowers us to actually be obedient 100%. But yet we have so many Christians that are not obedient. Mm-hmm. So my question, I guess, is why is that? Why, why do we have Christians who are not obedient? I think it goes back to kind of the, the peace thing. If we don't have all those, mm. all those relationships in balance, yeah. um, that it gets the whole thing off. And I think that, you know, like we need to, you know, if we're, if we're going through and continuing to make the same mistakes or having the same sin and our lives keep cropping up, we need to really evaluate ourselves and go, why is this such an issue for me? Where is it in my life that I need to change to, you know, to, to, to make it this to where it's not an issue for me? Um, what, what part of these relationships of this peace, you know, with myself or with nature, with people or with God, is it that I need to reevaluate and bring it back into alignment? Yeah, I think cause I hear that and I agree. And I've, I've taught similar things and try to counsel people uh, in that way. Um, and yet there still seems to be, and there's, there's pastors who are stuck mm-hmm. in sin. Um, there are um, lifelong churchgoers stuck in sin and so when and you say stuck in sin like I, i'm not trying to judge anybody i've had my own sin since i've become a follower of jesus christ um like uh, what point do does grace get to win and, and so i i think that grace does cover up our our flaws our sin love covers over a multitude of sins and 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 grace is definitely there and as long as we're following after jesus christ to the best of our abilities grace is going to win but i think for me like there's and, and I'm I'm I, I'm probably considered old school. I know I I think that we can have victory over sin, right? I know you believe the same thing, um, but there's so many people that continue to be stuck, and it seems like if we're to get to tie in what we're talking about, they're stuck without the victory of grace, right? They're depending on grace to cover the sin, which it does, but they're not taking that next step to where then grace leads them into obedience. And that's the part that I really struggle with. And I've, I've seen it in my own life until God has opened up my eyes through his word and through experiences with him that I've had in dealing with my sin. And so I don't want to be too harsh on anybody because maybe that time hasn't come for them yet. They're still working through that same thing that I've already gotten some victory over. So like, who, who am I to say you need to hurry up and get this right? But I do want to encourage all of us to understand that grace does give us victory, leads us towards victory at least, to where we're not we're not stuck in, in sin. Yeah. Well and I think uh, too that you know God will lead us through the things and maybe, you know, if we're still struggling with one, you know, particular thing, um, that maybe God is leading us, you know, I- away from something other. Um, I don't really know how to explain this other than to, like, give an example. But um, not that I think that, uh, oh, 
I don't know. So let's say that you want to have victory over, like, smoking, okay? Um, so maybe God is trying to lead you in that direction, um, but you don't quite have that victory over it yet. Um, but yet God's trying to work in this area, and maybe this area is the re- one of the main reasons why you smoke. So you need to start having, you know, really allowing God to work in this area, and then through that, you know, you can have victory in this area. So maybe God is working through this, and it will come to the victory over That's this good. other That's thing. Really um, but we just need to allow God to work through this other area um, before we can have victory over this because he's trying to change different things or lead us in a different direction in this area to give us victory right. in that and, that and that goes speaks back to what we talked about last week again with the roots like mm-hmm. we've got a, our root system has to be solid right right if we're going to produce good fruit so so whatever that whatever the outline action of sin mm-hmm. is in your life so it, no matter what that is behavior of sin like just modifying that behavior does not put you in a right relationship with god right mm-hmm. so if we can then to take your your thought there if we deal with whatever it is that's causing us to have a a disagreement with the Word of God, or it's causing us to say, you know what, my feelings matter more than what the Word of God says. We deal with whatever that issue is. Mm-hmm. Then the behavior changes once right. the once the underlying heart issue changes, and that's absolutely true. So that's that's mm-hmm. a great understanding. Like, so I want to again, I want to encourage us to, to understand that we can have victory over sin. Grace can drive us towards obedience and faithfulness, um, and yet there is grace for the journey there's mm-hmm. grace for that yes. process and yes. and so I, I really think that that's that's that goes both ways on that and we've got to be careful to understand when we look at other people's lives mm-hmm. you know um one we probably shouldn't be looking too deeply at other people's lives like in, with that microscope kind of idea um but when we when we get into relationship with people and they've given us the ability to be to hold them accountable you know through friendship and and that kind of true friendship love that that can happen and we, so we have this responsibility of holding someone accountable in a Christ-like, loving way um, that we have grace for that. And we learn how to extend that grace both in challenging them to be better, to, to be more obedient, but also giving grace where there's when we're still working on some of the underlying root issues. That's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, exactly like you said, like we need to be careful when we try to look at other people's mm-hmm. lives. And, um, you know, that I've learned, you know, that we're all kind of going towards the same thing. And maybe God will work on me, you know, on something very early on in my journey. And he won't work on it with other mm-hmm. people until later on in their journey. And even though I've, you know, I've kind of dealt with that and he's already dealt with me with that, I, I can't expect for God to work on my timeline with everybody else. You know, we're all individuals, and he knows how, you know, the best way to get us to, you know, to this this wholeness. And so he he continues to lead us on. And Mm -hmm. so um, where I might be able to speak into someone's life if I've already gone through that, um, but it's, uh, like, totally through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and I have to make sure that I'm completely in tune with that as well, um, to know that I'm not doing more damage to this than, you know, than if I'm doing it through the, whole the, through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, then I can know that, you know, God's already worked on that, and I was already prepared that way. If I'm doing it on myself, then I'm, because of myself and because of what I want to say, most likely I'm going to do damage to that. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So um, let's kind of move on to that next. Um, and we boast in this hope the gl- of the glory of God. And so that's kind of the last verse or the last part of that second verse there. And um, it said, hope is not merely optimism about the future. Christians will have troubles. And so that's kind of one of the things I really wanted us to discuss tonight, you know, that this this hope isn't merely optimism about the future, that we will have troubles. Um, and then another great, one of these great house quotes is, Christian hope for the future is based on God's already proven love for us in the past. Um, we discussed our, you know, we just had the women's uh, 
Bible study here in um, Sheraton that first time, and so far it's been our <laughs> only time. But we talked about how God has a good name, you know, how he's never failed us. Like, he's always had this good name, and so we trust in, in this because, you know, he's gotten th- us through so far. I, not that I think he would ever fail us, but, you know, he's gotten us through. So that, that hope is, is we have troubles, but we have hope that God's going to lead us through this whole situation. Yeah, it's so hard, you know, when people are dealing with, you know, family members who, who pass away, um, uh, you know, jobs get lost, uh, marriages fail, um, kids get sick. Um, all these things that that cause people to doubt even the existence of God, right? Or at least a good God that, you know, I've heard countless times, God, I don't want to believe, I'm not going to believe in a God that allows that to happen, right? And so that that's, man, so the hope that the Christians have, hope that, that we have as Christians is, like you said, not in, not in the circumstance. It's not in the um, it's not about just everything's going to work out, you know, like unicorns and rainbows, but that, but that absolutely God is with us in the circumstance. God is with us as we go through these things, um, and he's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us um, as his word promises us. But like so for some people, that's not enough. They want, they want the result every time to be what they want, um, and that's not the kind of hope that we have. And so we, as we show the hope, true hope, in, in, in God being with us through the mess, that's what we hope people see, right? Not that our hope has produced some sort of magic outcome, but that our hope stays constant in the midst of the things that don't work out the way that we think, that the way that we want them to anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So um, it says there to boast in the hope of the glory of God in verse 2, that glory of God, they said, was the likeness to God. So bearing God's image. Um, so to boast in the hope of the glory of God, uh, even in our present sufferings that produce. Um, so back into that, that verse, uh, well, 3 and through 4. Um, but we also glorify glory in our suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance brings um character or you can also say endurance or and character or endurance brings hope Mm -hmm. um so we know that even in our in our sufferings that it produces perseverance and that endurance and that hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us and leading on into that. So, Yeah, I mean, so yeah, our hope is in, in the image of God, like verse says, or, or being, being made, and we are, that we are being made into the image of God. Um, awesome, right? And then verse 3 starts out, not only that, like not only so, not just that, but also our hope, is in uh, I just want to get this right. It's in our sufferings, or where we glory in our sufferings, right? So we were mm-hmm. praising God in our sufferings, and I, I think I'm going to preach on this on Sunday from Philippians four. We rejoice in our sufferings um, because of this exactly. It produces perseverance, and the only way we're going to get through this world, and this is what all of our grandmas would would have taught us, right? That life ain't fair, right? All those cliche things that. You know, it's just, it's not going to work out exactly the way you want. And we're living in a time where it seems like that's what we're trying to make happen. We're trying to make every circumstance work out exactly the way we want it to. And that's just not possible. And, and, and I think that maybe it's not even right. Like, we want to work for the good of others especially. But can we take this verse and make it a reality that we actually glory in our sufferings? Like, just stop right there, full stop, right? Because we can go on and say why, right? And then this verse does exactly that. But so can we glory in our sufferings? And then we say, well, why would we do that? Well, because we need to be able to persevere, right? So, like, it's, a, it's that image of um, the, the butterfly coming out of the cocoon, right? Don't ever help a cocoon open up. You've killed that butterfly. That butterfly will not exist. 
if you help open up that cocoon. It needs to suffer through. It needs to work through. It needs to have the, the pain of growth and, and muscle building. And that's what we're, we're doing as Christians. We're building our, our muscles to be able to persevere in a world, in, an, on, in a time as this, where we legitimately don't know what's coming tomorrow. And nothing has is, is shown that and proven that to be true more than the last couple of weeks. Right. Things are changing on a daily basis in our lives like we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. And so we need to have the ability to persevere, to adapt, to endure, as some, uh, some versions say in there. And if we don't, we will not make it. Mm-hmm. We need to be able to persevere. And the only way we persevere is through suffering. So let's glory in our suffering. Let's praise mm-hmm. God for our suffering because we grow in that. Right, oh. right. There's no growth in the comfort zones. That's <laughs> one of the things that I like to say. Yep. Um, so in Paul's writings, there they kind of that that hope comes in two ways. So verses six through ten, and then ten and eleven. Um, and so he Paul goes on to say, um, you see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Um, death of Christ is a proof of God's agape love for us. And then in that next verse, um, Paul kind of asks us to consider who we would consider dying for as humans. Someone who's a good might have someone die for them. Um, but Christ wasn't like that because it says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah, yeah I love that idea. So like, who, who would I, if you were going to ask me, who would I die for right now? Like if 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 I if it was my if it was my choice that it was my life, or somebody else's, right? Um, I like to think that I would be okay with with dying, right? As Paul writes elsewhere, dying here, leaving my body here means joining with Christ, and praise God, let me do that. But but I I don't want to die a painful death, right? And so, but for the I think for the most part, the the obvious answer is we're not going to die for anyone that we don't actually love. Right. And so now as Christians, we're called to love the world. So maybe, maybe th- I, I really do hope that I would be willing to be able to, to, be, to I would be willing to die for a stranger because God has called me to love the stranger. I know I would die for my wife. I know that I would die for my children. Um, and, and, and I think for people that I love and care about and our church family and my other family members, I think I could get there pretty easily. But for a stranger, that's a whole other other thing. And yet. And it's not even and for G, the sake of Jesus dying. It wasn't strangers. It was people he knew because uh, God knows all. It was people that were his enemies. Mm-hmm. And so that's a very real thing. Would I die for someone who who's, you know, called me names or written me nasty emails? You know, and there's there's people out there that have done that and people that I don't see eye to eye with. Um, and it's just who, who would I be willing to die for? Um, mm-hmm. And Jesus was willing to die for everybody. Right. Right. It's good. <laughs> yes. The people that put the crown of thorns on his head and, and not just put it on his head, but likely Mashed jammed it, it yeah. down on his head and the, um, drove the nails into his, his hands and feet. Like mm-hmm. he was willing to die for them. Mm-hmm. He could have stopped that long before and he didn't. So that's a powerful, powerful verse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's just it kind of gives me goosebumps just thinking about, it. you know, like while we were still sinners, while we were still turned away from yeah. him. You know, he made the choice. I, I, I'm sure I know I've told this before, I've probably, but I love talking about this. Paul wrote this thinking about so when so Paul was alive when Jesus was alive, mm-hmm. uh, when Jesus died. Mm-hmm. Right. So Paul, before he was Paul, was Saul yep. persecuting uh, Christians. Right. After Jesus died and he rose from the dead and, and then ascended into heaven, he was still Saul persecuting them. But even while Jesus is alive, he was just a Jew. Right. Mm-hmm. He was not a fan of Jesus. Right. Or the disciples. And so. Uh, he, he was actively sinning against Jesus mm-hmm. when Jesus died on the cross. God gets a hold of him, turns him into Paul, uh, and then we get all these amazing things that he's written. And so he's written these words while we, and this is where we, like mm-hmm. I, I imagine that as he writes this, he's thinking I. Mm-hmm. While I was persecuting people who believed Jesus was something awesome, Jesus died for me. Like that, that gets me every time I, I read Romans five mm-hmm. is this Paul's writing this and he knows he, I mean, he knows better than any of us. While I was in the process of sinning against Jesus, 
He literally, in that exact moment, not 2,000 years ago, thinking of me now, but in that moment, he was willing to die for me, right. even though I was sitting against him right there. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I, I'm amazed uh, at that every time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, well, and I think uh, Paul's heart really comes out in his writing, you know, that he knows who he, <laughs> what he was doing when Jesus was alive. And, you know, he knows that, you know, how he kind of led that against, you know, the people that were the believed in Jesus. And so uh, he knew exactly where he was uh, before that whole Damascus Road experience. Um, Yeah. And so so that that second wave kind of trying to get us through this. Sorry. Uh, The second wave is like 10 through 11 um, that that uh, for if while we were, s- were God's enemies, uh, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Mm-hmm. And um, once again, Great House had a great quote. He said, clearly we made enemies of ourselves, treating God as our enemy by our disrespect for him, that he did not treat us, that he did not treat us as his enemies is proven at the cross. He was the wronged party, but he took the initiative uh, to remedy the alienation. Um, And kind of going back to that, that courthouse setting, as we discussed, um, those of you that have been, you know, in this, you know, that kind of courthouse setting where he was, he was the party that was wronged, uh, he was also the judge, but then he came alongside, and he was also our advocate. Yep. Um, so he took that initiative to remedy the alienation. Yep. I thought that was a, a great, you know, kind of thought there, you know, that we were God's enemy. Yeah. Um, but he didn't treat us as his enemy. That's good. Yeah, and ha- like, yeah. so if he was willing to do that, and I love that how that verse 10 reads, um, so having been reconciled to him through the death of his son, right? So exactly what you just said. And what Greyhouse said there at the foot of the cross is where he proves that, that he loves his enemies, right? He created, the, he created the opportunity for Jesus to die for everybody while we were still sinners. While we were sinning against him, he still died for us. So even, and so he provided this reconciliation while we were apart from him. How much more, I love that, it's a, having been, how much more having been reconciled Shall we be saved through his life? So Jesus, uh, his death allows us to be reconciled to God. And then our lives that we live now, still the choices we make, sinning and and being stuck in sin, as we talked about before, finding new ways to sin that, that the world throws up at us. We can still be saved in this life through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. I just, I love that. I love everything about this. And that you're right, very, very, you're right on. This is like a, uh, this wave of, of grace just coming in and being being this reconciliation uh, of coming, uh, you know, this this hope of of salvation, of being able to to, to believe in an eternal life with Jesus Christ, but to know that that can start now. It's mm-hmm. this life that mm-hmm. that can start in. It's not just when we die, but mm-hmm. now. Yeah, yeah. And so that I wanted to kind of talk a little bit on that reconciliation. Um, and it kind of, you know, brings it up in 11 as well. Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And so that reconciliation is said is like in, in that Greek, it would have been that at one meant or atonement, mm-hmm. um, that Peace, once again, you know, Paul kind of brings this back around, that peace with God and potential for peace with all those who Christ died for. Yeah. That's so good. Like that reconciliation thing. We're reconciled with God. We're reconciled to each other. We're reconciled to the world. And we're reconciled in ourselves. Absolutely. That's, right. that's huge. Yep. That's yep. good. Yep. And it, like, it, that, I think that's wonderful. You know, and I love reading through Paul 
speak his writings because a lot of that kind of comes back around he comes back to this this idea of peace this reconciliation this peace we have with god with other people so um in this, in this uh, and I guess we can kind of stop as at this as our kind of closing kind of thought here. Um, in this Roman study guide by N.T. Wright, he asked the question. So he kind of says, Paul's argument in verses 6 through 11 take the f- takes the form familiar in various systems of lar- logic, not at least Jewish ones, of how much more. If someone has struggled up a sheer rock face against all odds to get to the mountain, they are not likely to give up at the top of the vertical wall when they are faced with an easy stroll on the grassy path. How does this analogy explain verses 9 through 11? So that since we've now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God's in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom which we have now received reconciliation. That thought of how much more so and then also in that suffering so we've gone you know as he said of this we've struggled up this sheer rock face um you know like like how much more yeah i think it's like so anytime you work for something uh when it's difficult the payoff is just so rewarding right Mm -hmm. and so like if we didn't have to struggle up that rock face, if we didn't have to, you know, climb uh, and, and grow and get stronger and, and, st- and stumble and fall and, and get back up again, uh, like if we just could just walk nice and gently into heaven. And that's, you know, that's what we're facing now with this virus in our world. It has, it has, it has just rocked some of our worlds because we've been on this nice, easy stroll through life, right? There's some blips on the road, but... You know, we might have to climb over a little, you know, boulder that's in the way. But we, many of us are, are, are just comfortable in this life and we're, it's being shaken up. Um, and maybe that's a good thing. We need to struggle. Like mm-hmm. we, to tie that back in, we need to struggle so we can learn to persevere. Mm-hmm. Right? It, w- there could, there's, there's going to come a time, if you haven't faced it already, where, where the devil's going to get something in the world to grab your attention and say, this is the way to go. Put that Jesus stuff aside. Or, you know what, just, just, just don't, don't think about it so much. Just come and do this. Just, just focus on this. And when we start to set Jesus aside, we lose. We lose out on what God has for us. And so the struggle that produces perseverance is so big because it produces in us character. Yeah. And character is what produces hope. You know, that's, that's so true. We can see it played out every step of our lives. And mm-hmm. I, think, I think that would be the closing thought here is, is what are you struggling with in this time, you know, these last couple of weeks? What has is, what is made this difficult for me? The, the, I hate not being around people, right? I really do. Um, I hate not seeing your faces, uh, you know, two or three times a week, some of you, some of you more so. And it just, it just gets me down. And so there's a struggle there. I, I, I don't like my kid not being in school. Um, that forces stress on our family. Um, those kinds of things, and 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 now while for a couple weeks it's it's fun a little bit, but then all of a sudden it's going to be difficult, mm-hmm. right? And there's just real stress there. Um, I want us to make sure that that we're facing that struggle with the idea that we need to get through this. We mm-hmm. need to persevere through this because yeah. it's going to cause us to grow. And mm-hmm. It's going to cause our witness for Jesus Christ to be better mm-hmm. because it produces character, which produces hope, and hope is what people need to see. To, to, to buy into everything that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I think of it like, you know, getting through that, she, like if you're climbing this mountain, so you get to the top of this mountain, you know, like the next one, um, so if it's a little smaller, like you're not going to, you're not going to really think about it that yeah. much. You're going <laughs> to, yeah. you're going to go, wow, this is easy. Like you've built the muscles. Um, yeah. Cause yep. you've gone through that. You've gone through that endurance. And I think, you know, in, and two, you know, 
God is faithful. He has a good name. And he brings us through these things. And he's brought us through so much. Right. I mean, I know he's brought me through so much in my life yeah. that um, – and it has it has brought that that hope that knowing you know no what no matter what I have to face, um, God has gotten me through, Amen. and He has continued to use you know the 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 broken things that I've had, um, I've given them to Him, and He has turned them around into such a beautiful Amen. things, and you know that that has really given me that hope that. That knowing that no matter what it is that we're facing, like no matter what this mountain looks like, mm -hmm. um, we can get through this mm -hmm. and God will lead us through this. And, you know, even if, you know, it hurts for us, you know, building that muscle hurts. Yeah. And there's no growth when we're not hurting, right. you know, I, uh, I, there's no growth in the, our comfort zones. And so we have to kind of step out of that and, and, and go through some of these hurts, um, not because we want to, mm -hmm. um, and not because I feel like God puts them in our life to, you know, to cause just, this is just an inevitable, like this is just the ball, the ball has already started rolling, you right. know, it started rolling way back when Adam made the decision. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so not that God like pushes these things into our lives to give us character, uh, but when these things happen, because mm -hmm. they will, absolutely, he will use them right. to grow us and yeah. to, you know, to give us. And the more we see that and the more we see him mm -hmm. taking us through these things and faithfully taking us through these things, we have more and more of that hope. Yeah, yeah suffering is going to happen. Suffering is going to have brokenness is going to happen. Pain uh, is a reality. Uh, and so. Uh, we can we can work to avoid it as much as possible, which is there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Uh, and again, every every generation that we produce more and more uh, followers of Jesus Christ, I hope my kids have an uh, have a uh, um, an enjoyable life. Like I want them to enjoy life. I want them life to the full. But they're going to face them. My parents uh, never would have imagined what I'm facing with this virus stuff. Like and they're and they're facing it too. They're still uh, around. But they the reality is there that pain is inevitable. Suffering is inevitable. So when we go into that, recognizing that we're in a suffering situation, let's persevere, let's grow, and let's find hope in all of that. Yeah, yeah. good. Well, anything else you've got for us? No. All right. Well, thanks again for, for watching with us. Let me close us in prayer, and I want to encourage you to, to tune in on Sunday. We'll have uh, another live sermon at 1045, and then you can still watch that uh, anytime afterwards. But I uh, encourage you to join us for a time of worship and, and celebration um, and, and, and opening up God's Word together. Uh, I was so encouraged by all the people that, that commented that they were watching you know, live on Sunday morning, and uh, that's just a, it's a powerful thing. Even though we're not together, um, there's a way to be connected. And so let's do that again this week. Let's, let's break the Internet, as, as uh, some other pastors have said they're trying to do. We can do that same thing, and uh, I'm just glad that uh, I get to be part of your family, your church family, and, and you're a part of mine. So uh, let's, let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your your, uh, your grace and your peace and the hope that you give us as we talked about tonight. Let those three things be, be something that we can just cling to right now in this time of uncertainty. We can, we can rest in your, in your grace. We can, we can enjoy your peace. But, Father God, that hope, that hope that comes when we persevere through suffering and, and the world sees it. The world sees the kind of hope that we can have when we have you as our guide, when we have Jesus as the one who has saved us, and we follow after him. Father God, would you help us to take up our cross every single day, follow after Jesus. We pray this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen.